Today in the Colorado Rockies franchise, we are taking this season to the All-Star break to see where the Rockies are, if they're going to be in a position to compete, and where we are as we approach the trade deadline. Speaking of trades, I've been thinking a lot more about trying to acquire prospects to fill some holes within the organization. And there are some players now that probably don't have future roles on the team. So I wanted to see who would like to add Josh Fuentes. And there were some decent offers. And there were even some eight potential players here who project way down the line to maybe make it to the bigs. But specifically, I really wanted to get some bullpen pitching in the organization. Didn't really do a great job in the draft. Miami had an offer I thought was intriguing, and I edited this a little bit to include Lewin Diaz, who could basically play that corner infield spot and provide depth there as we trade away Fuentes. So that deal is done. We bring in Tyler Stevens, a reliever, add Lewin Diaz, and I'm still looking at potentially trading Javi Baez, although it does seem like the offers I'm getting from teams aren't as good as they were a while ago. So we'll see where that ends up. We are making another roster move to start this episode, and we are going to be designating Carlos Santana for assignment as... This year hasn't really gone well for him coming off the bench. He's only hitting 157 with a 218 on base percentage. I want to get Garrett Hampson back up to the majors, so we are making this move. Hampson has done a really good job at AAA since his first send down of this series. So we continue into the month of July. Colorado going a couple games above 500 with a nice stretch here against the Padres, Cardinals, and Marlins. And that's where we're going to pick up the action here in Miami. Forgot they had the fish tank behind home plate here. Both teams with similar records trying to get into that wild card conversation. And Jose Barrios takes the mound. It looks like he's having a good year, but the strikeouts are down from what you would expect from him. Here is a ground ball. It's knocked down by the shortstop, but Brendan Rodgers reaches. Then the next batter, Ryan McMahon, hitting third every day. Full count from Barrios, and he'll take the change up outside to a board for the Colorado Rockies and Connor Joe. The average still pretty solid at 271. Two on, two down, and Joe gets ahead, 3-1. That pitch is turned on, hit deep down the line in left field. This one's back, and Connor Joe puts the Rockies in front. Three nothing in the first. Number four on the season for Connor Joe as he catches up to the fastball and clobbers it. Barrios threw it right down the middle, and the Rockies get that early offense that's eluded them for much of the season. Now David Geronimo with a deep fly ball. That's into the corner. Well foul. Two and two, and he crushes this one. Deep left center. Geronimo sends it out, and the Rockies go up 4 nothing. Number nine on the season for Geronimo, and we've seen more of that power in the last month or so. And the Rockies, who have struggled to put up runs, find a way to hit two home runs, but wait a minute here. Dom Nunez, the other way. This one stays in, and the inning is over at last. But the Rockies do their damage in the first and turn this lead over to John Gray, who has probably been our worst starter this season, but his numbers are getting better, and he gets the 3-2 chase here for the second out of the inning. Corey Dickerson batting third. He'll sky this one in center. That's where Connor Joe's playing in this game with Trey Turner at shortstop. Let's take it to the second. Turner batting eighth now at that 205 average, and he'll take a four pitch walk. Now, of course, I want to have John Gray bunt him over, but I'd rather have Turner take second first, but that's not going to happen. He's thrown out by Kyle Higashioka. Base is empty. A couple batters later, it's a two-out single for Brandon Nimmo as we get back to the top of the order. Brendan Rodgers, 2-0, gets jammed a bit, but it's going to fall in shallow right, putting two on with two down for McMahon. 
That smoked into right field. Base hit. And we thought about sending Nimmo home, but we'll leave the bases loaded. And now a chance with the bases loaded for Ty France. Not how Barrios wanted to start his day. One, two. This gets away from the catcher, but bounces back to him, and they have a play at home. I saw the wild pitch and thought we could score. Maybe that's partially a product of not being familiar with this ballpark and the backstop, but that was the perfect carom off the wall back to Higashioka. So we go bottom two, and it's Josh Fuentes facing his former team. He is starting for Miami, and he is retired in the second. Two down. They've also brought in Randall Gritchick from the Toronto Blue Jays and a two hopper to Trey Turner as we see him back at his usual position in this game. And perhaps that's where he'll play going forward after a Baez trade. Top four and Trey Turner hits a ball about as well as he has all season. He's reached again. Higashioka threw him out last time. I'm thinking there's no way it happens again. High throw and the tag applied. They got him again. 0 for 2. I don't think we're trying to steal on Higashioka anymore. I'm still shocked about that. Bottom four, Jose Devers with a chopper to the right side. And John Gray continues to get outs, and he was getting them at a rapid pace. Pitch 40 is right here. Change up on the outside corner. Jesus Aguilar with a big swing and miss. He falls behind. John Gray goes back to the curveball. Perfect pitches in that at-bat to end the fourth. The way this game started, I wasn't sure how long Barrios would last, but he was able to settle things down in the third and fourth especially. Here in the fifth facing McMahon. After looking at a couple slurves, you're wondering if he goes back to it. And we're looking at strike three there. Second strikeout for Barrios. And then I feel like I'm constantly getting good pitches with France, but nothing's happening. So Barrios gets through the fifth, recovers after a bad first inning. We'll go bottom five. Great start to the day for John Gray. Pitch count in the low 40s. And Josh Fuentes with a drive to left center has put Miami on the board. That is way out. The revenge game for Fuentes. He goes 462 to left center for his first home run of the season. Later in the inning, runner on first. 3-2 to Kyle Higashioka. He can't believe it, but it was a perfect pitch. Second strikeout for John Gray. And then with a line drive into left center field, Miami trying to get a rally going. And they go first and third as they get to the top of the order. Starling Marte. And he pops up the first pitch behind first. And Rodgers is over to make the catch. Inning over. Marlins do get on the board. It's 4-1. First out of the Marlins bullpen. It's Eliezer Hernandez. Full count to Connor Joe and a really good slider at the knees. Strike three. Next up, David Geronimo. First pitch pulled over to third base and he is retired. After the hot start, the offense starting to run cold for Colorado. Bottom six. With the pitch count not a concern for John Gray, I felt like he could handle a third trip through the order. 65 pitches in. I'm not concerned about anything, but he walks Jose Devers to begin the inning, then falls behind Corey Dickerson, who hits a chopper. He's out, but Devers up to second. John Gray stays in. 0-1, a hanging breaking ball. Aguilar, deep left field. You had to know that was gone off the bat. It is crushed. 417 feet. Now a 4-3 ball game. And that's the end of the day for John Gray. I felt like the sixth inning wasn't asking too much. It didn't feel like a bad risk to keep him out there. His control felt good like that inning didn't match up with the rest of his performance. So Tuki Toussaint comes out of the bullpen. And he starts missing the strike zone against Josh Fuentes. He walks on four pitches. 
Next up, Randall Gritchick. 1-0 on the ground. And Turner trying to make a tough play. Throws it over second base. It's into foul territory. This is trouble. Runners at second and third after a huge error for Turner in one of his first games at short in quite some time. Just over Rogers' glove. And the Marlins have a threat now trying to take the lead. Eduardo Escobar looks at a strike, two and two. There's strike three, called at the top of the strike zone. A big out for Tuki Toussaint. Two down, Kyle Higashioka at the plate. He gets ahead, three and zero. Oh. And Toussaint again struggling to find the strike zone. He has walked two, and the bases are loaded for Adolis Garcia. Coming off the bench for Miami now. There's a big strike, 94. And then the chase with the slider. Toussaint gets ahead 0-2. And he ends the inning with a big strikeout. Colorado still in front, but could really use a couple more runs. Top of the seventh with two away. It's Brandon Nimmo back up the middle. Another base hit for him. Rogers two for three on the day, and he'll send this one back up the middle. It's knocked down, but no play. His third hit. Ryan McMahon has had some chances in this game, and he gets ahead. 2-0 to the Rockies' best power hitter. And it's on the ground, hit sharply. Play made by Aguilar, and we go bottom seven. Still a one-run game. Michael Givens coming out of the bullpen. He's had a good season overall, but he has allowed a high batting average. Two and two. That's a drive. Deep left field. If it's fair, it's gone. Marte ties the game for Miami. Four unanswered. Three big home runs for the Marlins. And perhaps regression to the mean here for Michael Givens, allowing this... High batting average, but hasn't allowed many runs this year. And then he gives up the sharply hit double to left center. Aguilar up again. He falls behind in the count. Given strikes him out, elevating the fastball. Two down. Trying to keep this game tied. It's Josh Fuentes falling behind, chasing the fastball. And then on the 1-2 pitch, lined over to first, and the inning is over, but the Marlins have come all the way back. Colorado has not built upon their great start, but can they get back in front here late? After a Connor Joe walk, it's Geronimo popping up the slider. 2-2, two and two, and he pops up again, this time in play. Easy play in center field. With two down. Dom Nunez, that's a line drive, hit to center, and the catch is made. Marlins taking all the momentum in this game and trying to score in their fourth consecutive inning. Alexander Colome coming out of the bullpen as Gritchick chases. This count goes even. Won't chase the changeup. Now we have a full count. And Colome misses outside. Ever since the sixth inning, we've seen a lot of control issues here for the pitchers. Eduardo Escobar chases and falls behind. And then takes the fastball. This count eventually runs full. And this battle ends up going 10 pitches. Colome had to throw 20 pitches to the first two batters he faced. So now I'm not thinking he's getting through this inning. Michael Bush comes off the bench. Ground ball knocked down, but France gets to it and takes his time throwing to first. Really got a bad animation there. So we're going to Sir Anthony Dominguez. That was just too many pitches to keep him out there. Dominguez falls behind Marte. Everybody's having trouble finding the strike zone now. But this count does run full. And Marte takes the slider away. They are loaded now. Jose Devers. 1-2. Popped up. In comes Geronimo. He's got this one. And the game is still tied. 
With the way this game had shifted, I knew we needed something big on offense. Can the Rockies score for the first time since the first inning? Here's Trey Turner, and with this ball hit to short, he is going to reach for the third time in this game. Javi Baez comes off the bench, fouls off a slider, falls behind, and strikes out on the high fastball. Brandon Nimmo, two for four on the day. He goes after the high slider and pops it up. That is the second out. In every at-bat in this inning, they did try to pitch out expecting Turner to take off, but no. Rogers line drive into center. Here's Marte with the sliding catch. If he doesn't catch that, Turner scores. What a fantastic play. We're going bottom nine. Scott Oberg trying to force extras. Here's Jesus Aguilar, and again, falling behind in the count, Oberg walks Aguilar. Where have all these walks come from? Josh Fuentes would love to do nothing more than dagger his former team, but Oberg strikes him out on three pitches. It's up to Randall Gritchick in the ninth. And he sends one deep to right. It's over Nimmo's head. He'll play it off the wall. Aguilar up to third. I'm guessing they didn't have a good option to pinch run for him. Otherwise, this game's over. But now the bases are loaded. Kyle Higashioka trying to win it. Oberg 1-1. One one. That swung on. Gets away from Nunez. They won't test it. But now a two-strike count. Up the middle. Stopped by Oberg. We're going to extras. These innings getting way too exciting for Miami. So the extra inning rule is in effect. And we have one of the fastest players in the league on second base. Just got to bring him home. Ryan McMahon. He quickly gets ahead. Fouls off the fastball. And this count runs full Ripped it over to first. It was on the ground, so Hampson moves up to third base. Ty France for the go-ahead run. Ground ball at third, and Hampson has to stay put. Two down. It's up to Connor Joe, who got us our first runs. This is sent to left center. A towering fly. Marte back. He's got enough room in front of the scoreboard. And we're going bottom 10 without adding a run. Can Taylor Rogers, who might be our only all-star this year, force an 11th inning? Runner on second. Rogers quickly getting ahead in the count. There's the big breaking ball for the first out. Top of the order, Starling Marte, one for four. This one's fouled down the right field line. On the outside corner, a perfect pitch. Rogers ahead once again. That's a line drive into right center, and the Marlins are going to walk off Colorado with their fifth unanswered run. Starling Marte wins it in the 10th. And the Rockies blow a very winnable game in Miami, putting four on the board in the first against Jose Barrios. And we don't score again. I feel like this game really represents where the Rockies offense is. They show up every now and then showing great potential. But there's just no consistency. And I think we're a little too reliant on the long ball. Which we're not even great at achieving. So we dropped that game to Miami. And they end up taking that series, winning the next game 3-0. We do end up taking 3 of 4 from the Mets and split the first two with the Giants. So trying to win a second consecutive series. This is the last game before the All-Star break. Dom Nunez has been really fun here in the first half. His stats really aren't anything special. I suppose we have more homers than we expect from him. But he's had some really good moments. In that 230 batting average, he's had some really timely hits for us in some key games. 
Top of the fourth inning here. We've seen Dom Nunez do this a ton. I'm not sure if they keep track of like a catcher's throwout percentage, but I feel like he's done a pretty good job. Let's go bottom seven where it is a two to two game. Nunez in the center. That's going to fall in for a base hit starting off the seventh. Two batters later, Brandon Nimmo. Lined into the gap as Nimmo continues his great year. Rolling all the way to the warning track and Nunez is waved around. He'll score and Nimmo has an RBI triple putting the Rockies in front. They would eventually bring Brandon Nimmo home. And we're going into the ninth. Taylor Rogers trying to seal it. And that's past Nimmo. It got down. It is a leadoff double. Justin Bohr lines it into left field. First two reach for the Giants, and this is going to be a run. It's now 4-3. to three. Rogers has blown four saves this season. Now a ground ball from Austin Slater. And trying to get that aggressive out at second, we do. A double play here ends the game. Rugned Odor chasing the sinker. He'll strike out. Giants down to their last out. It's pinch hitter, Pedro Leon. 0-1 from Rodgers. It's left over the middle. Crushed to center. Back goes Connor Joe. It's out of here. Giants take the lead in the ninth. Rodgers has blown his fifth save. And obviously that pitch didn't go where we wanted it to. Bottom of the ninth inning. Brandon Nimmo strikes out facing Edwin Diaz. Next up, Brendan Rodgers. That's a fly ball. Hit to center. I don't even want to watch this one. Rockies blow another game. We're still above 500, but losses like this really hurt when we want to be in that wild card contending spot, but I feel like... We're probably not quite there this season. And games like this kind of serve as an example of where we're more of a middle of the road team now at 48 and 45. We don't have anybody in this year's home run derby, unfortunately, and the all-star break is in St. Louis this year. I'll probably do what I did last season for the all-star festivities. It's still fun to go through. We're definitely in the wild card chase, but I still don't think we're going to be aggressive at the deadline. I see us probably trading Baez and then really doing nothing and just seeing where the season goes. I'll take a look at who has expiring deals, but I'd probably trade Baez and then play the rest of the season out. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments section. Ryan McMahon is of course a player we have to think about. I love to know what like the contract demands are for him with this breakout season. I could see, I don't even know, this is just kind of a guess, but I could see him asking for something in the 15 million a year range. Like three years, 45 million. Do you give him that or do you let him walk? I really don't know. So I guess I got to figure that out here pretty soon because the trade deadline is July 31st and we're just a couple weeks away in game. Overall, we're still set to have some big improvement this year. I do think we can win 80 games, but that's not going to take you to the postseason in most cases. And the wildcard teams out in front right now look pretty strong. So you got to get to like 94, 95 wins to probably feel good about your chances. I don't think we're going to have many players in the All-Star game. Maybe Taylor Rogers, who just blew the save going into it, but... I uh, don't expect anybody else. Maybe Brandon Nimmo. He's kind of up there in the all-star voting, but I'm not sure if he'll make the cut. He's fourth at center field, so I'm kind of thinking no. But that's where we are at the end of this episode. The record is getting better. Unfortunately, we couldn't win these games today to make it look even greater and get to like 50 wins at the deadline. But that is going to bring this episode to an end. I hope you all enjoyed it. Please leave a like if you did and subscribe to the channel. Have a great weekend, everybody. More Rockies coming soon.